Welcome to my channel, Excel Highway, your one-stop shop for all your Excel needs. In today's video, I want to share with you a very nice file that's supposed to help you control your containers around the globe. This video should really help people that work in supply chain and logistics or controllers and want to build for themselves something very nice to be able to to uh, understand what's their position, where do they have an issue, their costs, etc., etc. It's a very basic um, file and dashboard, but it could give you some ideas on how to take it further. So this is the end result, the dashboard, and you can see I have a nice picture of containers at port. I've got three slicers here for shipping company, port of destination, port of load, and I have two. Um, timelines for discharge at port which control some of the charts so on top I have a chart for number of containers per status how many are being delivered to found destination were delivered gate out departure discharge at port and also I have here a chart that shows me the charges per month split between ocean freight inland freight and demarge and detention and of course, I can select, for example, Mediterranean Shipping Company, and these will change. I can only look at what was shipped to Antwerp or where what was shipped from Long Beach. Okay. Uh, all the data here is the dummy data that I created, so nothing here is really is realistic. And I can also control the period. Show me 2022 uh, discharge at port, 2021. Etc. On the bottom, I have a futuristic look. What's my expected arrival per week? Every week, how many containers should arrive? This is, you know, important for people that are have a limited capacity and can see exactly how many containers should arrive to their warehouse or their port. And Expected the margin detention per destination. This is a theoretical analysis based on uh, expectations, how many days, and the cost per day. And I'll show you how to build all of this, of course. And on the bottom, I have a container alert. This is really supposed to be useful for certain, um, you know, uh, logistic managers because that, that can show you them which are the hottest containers, the ones that they need to uh, offload immediately and return to the shipping companies. So this is the dashboard itself. Um, this is where I made, make, uh, created the uh, dummy data. I just took the 10 top ports in US, the 10 top ports in, in Europe, and the 10 top companies, shipping companies for each shipping company. I made a make-believe free D&D &D days and then a daily charge thereafter. This is, of course, much more complicated, but just for our, for our example. And here is where I just used random numbers between 1 and 10 to select the company. So this changes whenever you do anything in Excel. I just took whatever was the last version, copied it over here to the database. So what do we have in the database? This is supposed to simulate some sort of report that you should be getting from your freight forwarder or shipping company, or maybe you have that in your in your um, yeah, IT system. But this this is something that you, you should be able to receive at least most of it. So you should have the port of load, the port of destination, and the shipping company, the bill of lading, and the container number. So this is just, you know, dummy data that I created, CBL and row and use the name of the shipping company plus the row number, just so it's a unique number. Then you have the dates. Usually you'd get the actual, actual departure, actual discharge at port, actual get out, actual delivery to found destination, and when it was returned. I also added an expected arrival. That's for our other chart. I usually you have also an expected for almost all of these. So this usually is something that you have. And then the costs, now normally you have a better breakdown, but just for our exercise, I'm using the inland freight, the ocean freight, and whatever demarge and tension you got. 
So up until here, this is supposed to be your raw data. Over here is where there are some you know, simple formulas. I'm looking for the free days and the daily charge that was built here, okay? And then based on today, I'm taking the number of days um, that, and this is only for a live container that was discharged at port and it was not returned. So if something is still on way or returned, it shouldn't be part of this equation. And just multiply that number by the daily charge. <clears throat> uh, the expected arrival dates so are just taking that date and breaking it down to year and week. Since we cannot do that automatically in pivot tables, you have to do it this way. And it's best to start with the year, then the week. That way it will be um, organized in the right way, numerical, you know, sorted. The container status, that's just looking for the last date and making sure that whatever last date here, it shows the, the, the first line. I'm just using index and match. So I'm just looking for matching the maximum value between G and K. Once I find that, I'm trying to match that within that array. I know that it's <clears throat> in the third or five or fifth location. I'm just going to use index to pull that. If you got any questions about that, this formula, just let me know. And I'll, I'll be happy to, to support your answer clearly. So this just gives us exactly what the the container status is for each line. So that's, you know, really a very basic file and some really nice out outputs that you can reach. Then you got the pivot tables. Some of them are really straightforward. Um, container status, number of containers, the costs, and the um, whatever you decide, just group it, okay, into year month, if I ungroup. Okay, you see the full date. Uh, I chose the departure. And now I'm just going to group month here. It's very uh, user-friendly to do it this way. Okay. Um, then I have the expected D&D, &D, just summarized by the port destination, and the expected arrival per week. Now I like to have the pivot tables on one sheet and the dashboard with the charts and <clears throat> the slicers in the other. It's just very much more user-friendly because if you had the charts over here together with the table, it'd be very confusing. And this way you just uh, have all the data in a very nice and friendly way. Um, so yeah, then you just have to add the slicers. You build the slicer, you connect the slicer to whatever pivot tables that you want. So for example, the timeline is only connected to the first two since these are futuristic. So that's how I built all the all the uh, charts that you saw. And here the only you know exception is I also um, um, just a second. So here you see the container alert basically is just I filtered by value, okay, top 10. You don't have to. I just did it just to show whoever's going to use it, you know, what are the most urgent, urgent ones that he has to, he, she has to um, work on. So if you like the video, if you're still here, <laughs> um, I'd appreciate it if you could subscribe, leave a comment, um, and uh, support my channel. If you want me to send over this file, I'd be more than happy to do so. And just leave a comment and I will. Have a good one. Take care.